the next image. So this is called as Mapleson, Mapleson F circuit or Jackson Ray circuit or JAR circuit. It is the best circuit for both spontaneous and controlled ventilation in children. How can you identify this? See this. This doesn't have a closed APL valve. Okay. And this is the best circuit for both spontaneous and controlled ventilation in children. You usually use in children less than six years and less than 20 kilos. Okay. So when a question comes, which is the best circuit for spontaneous ventilation in children? Answer Maples and F. Which is the best circuit for controlled ventilation in children? I mean, when among the Maples and circuits, it is Maples and F. Okay. A team of pediatric anesthesiologists is reviewing equipment for an upcoming surgery on a toddler. The child is four years old and weighs 18 kilos. Which breathing circuit should be most appropriate for this patient, especially considering its suitability for use in both spontaneous and controlled ventilation in young children? What is the answer? Two, Mapleson F or Jackson B circuit. Mapleson B circuit is not in use. Bain circuit, Mapleson D, it is used for mainly in adults, that too for controlled ventilation. TP circuit or IS TPs, it is like nothing. I, when I say TPs, it is IS TPs, it is Mapleson G. It, is, it can also be used in children, but the best circuit is used is Mapleson F. So among A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D are used in adults, E, F are used in children. And among the ones which are popular, A and D in Mapleson A and Mapleson D in adults and Mapleson F in children. A, Mapleson A, best circuit for spontaneous ventilation. Adults, Maples and D best circuit for controlled ventilation. Adults, Maples and F for Johnson Reese circuit, the best circuit for both spontaneous and controlled ventilation in children. Okay, then coming to another important thing this is carbon dioxide absorber, this is soda lime. Soda lime, uh, there are a few things soda lime, bare lime, and amsorb. But again, remember, soda lime is the most common thing which we use. The composition is 94% calcium hydroxide, 5% sodium hydroxide, and 1% potassium hydroxide. The color indicator, like once it is exhausted, the color indicator is titan yellow remember this titan yellow and absorption capacity it absorbs 40 to 23 liters of carbon dioxide per 100 grams of uh, soda lime you may get a questions based on this also and hardness this is hard due to the presence of silica in that okay so there's another thing called para lime this para lime though the name is para lime again still the major constant 80 percent is calcium hydroxide and 20 percent is barium hydroxide and it absorbs 9 to 18 liters of carbon dioxide per 100 grams of soda lime. Per 100 grams. Okay. Now, in a lecture on the components of anesthesia machines, the instructor focuses on carbon dioxide absorber, specifically discussing soda lime. What is the primary composition of soda lime used in carbon dioxide absorbers? And what indicator is commonly used to signify the exhaustion of end of its effective life. So 90% calcium hydroxide, 5% NaOH, 1% KOH and phenolphthalein indicator. Yes, you answered it correctly. It is 94% calcium hydroxide, 5% NaOH and 1% KOH and the indicator is tight and low. Okay. Fine. Then so this is ambu bag, which you have been like very um, familiar with this, like particularly during the COVID, you might have seen this. This ambu, the full form of this, like a few things, the full form has to be remembered. This artificial manual breathing unit, also known as ladder's valve. And here there will be valve which prevents rebreathing that is called as a Rubens valve. And the maximum deliverable of percentage of oxygen when you are ventilating through ambu bag, how much you can deliver. Once you attach this, breathing mask, this mask, uh, sorry, this bag, and you attach the oxygen source here, you can deliver up to 100%, which is very, very, very important. The valve that prevents rebreathing, Rubens valve, maximum deliverable oxygen is 100% with the presence of oxygen source and reservoir bag. The advantages of this, this is easy to use and economical. Disadvantages, if you use improper use, it may lead to barotrauma and it can't necessarily maintain the PEEP required positive end expiratory pressure. Okay, a medical instructor is teaching a group of students about various resuscitation devices. When explaining the ambu bag, she highlights its full name and its oxygen delivery capacity. What is the full name of ambu bag and what is the ma maximum oxygen concentration that it can deliver when connected to an oxygen source along with a reservoir bag? Okay, automated mechanical breathing unit to 85%, artificial manual breathing up to 100%, assisted manual breathing up to 95%, advanced mechanical breathing unit up to 90%. 
very good artificial manual breathing see usually we may oversee like uh, okay i'm going to remember artificial manual breathing when you see many things like automated artificial assisted advanced mechanical manual and all these things you may get confused so few things you consolidate well okay it's artificial manual breathing unit then this is reservoir bags so there are usually four sizes 250 ml units 500 ml for children 1 liter for adults and some 2 liters for adults what is the use of this when you during a spontaneous during a spontaneous ventilation like whether the patient is breathing or not you can visually see uh, based on this reservoir bag and among the controlled ventilation also once you keep it like how the the bag is moving it helps giving a uh, idea whether the patient is breathing or not okay in a lecture on anesthesia machine components the instructor explains the function of the reservoir bag what is the primary purpose of this reservoir bag in the entire anesthesia circuit to filter out the carbon dioxide from the exhaled gases to provide a visual indication of the patient's breathing pattern to increase the humidity of the inhaled gases to store extra anesthetic gas for emergencies very good to provide a visual indication of patient's breathing pattern is the correct answer to filter out carbon dioxide from exhaled gases we use in fact soda lime to increase the humidity we use closed circuits okay <clears throat> then coming to the next one oral airways so there are various airways like um, the most commonly used is goodell airway various sizes will be there the use is to prevent the tongue fall and to maintain the airway patency and the most common cause of airway obstruction in unconscious patient is tongue fall so to prevent this uh, to prevent this airway obstruction tongue fall patients so you use this oral airways the complication is once you take a uh, wrong size it may stimulate the gag reflex okay the correct size is required the easiest way of measurement is correct size from tragus to the angle of the mouth among the various sizes is tragus to the angle of the mouth is what you uh, measure okay tragus to the angle of the mouth no in a basic life support training course participants are learning about airway management tools the instructor demonstrates the uses of oral airways what is the primary purpose of an oral airway in an emergency care to suction the secretions from the oropharynx to facilitate endotracheal intubation to prevent tongue from obstructing the airway and to deliver aerosolized medications to the lungs very good and the answer is to prevent the tongue from obstructing the airway to face suction the secretions more or less use the suction catheter and to facilitate endotracheal intubation you use in fact laryngoscope and to deliver aerosolized medications you use there will be special devices like where it can be delivered through the nebulizers okay then oral airways metallic so this is a, a normal uh, plastic thing and pvc we have the oral airways it is metallic airways the like three water's airway and the, these airways can you see this with the different shapes and these are called the airways used for resuscitation where one goes inside the patient's mouth and another will be outside like in old days for the mouth to mouth ventilation they are used there supper and brooks supper and brooks this special design of this uh, airway this supper airway this uh the special design itself is an advantage for mouth to mouth ventilation used for resuscitation okay then in a first aid training session the instructor demonstrates the use of different oral airways for resuscitation what is the key characteristic of the supper airway that makes it suitable for emergency situation it has a flexible design it includes a bite block it is transparent for visual monitoring it can be used in conscious patients simple like you may not be knowing anything apply the mind okay it includes a bite block bite block has everything even it has a bite block that's not a thing it is transparent for visual monitoring that metallic airways it can be used in unconscious patients usually in conscious patients if you use it it stimulates the gag reflex it has this flexible design like where you can use for um, resuscitation is what the answer you see it's always picking up the most appropriate and the, the best answer among the options available okay then